Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Um, today, I would like to talk to you about how temperature data from space can actually solve the challenges of food security on Earth. It's kind of a difficult connection, but I'll try to make that connection for you. So first of all, you all know that in about 25 years from now, we're going to be 10 billion people on the planet, and we need more food to sustain those 10 billion people. To do that, we need about two and a half times the area of crops we have now. However, we probably have around 30% less of area compared to about 20 years ago. And also, much needed regulations to reduce fertilizer use will also lead to a loss in yield, another 20% lost. The biggest contribution, however, will come from climate change directly. So up to 50% of the yield will be lost due to raising, rising temperatures. Um, this will lead to a massive increase um, of crop prices, and that's not like cash crops. This is really basic crops, maize, soy, paddy. And this is mainly driven by an increase in water prices, six to 12 times by 2030. That is six harvests left. So how the hell can we solve this? And what does temperature play a role? So in this case, temperature determines three important cycles the pillars of food security. The first cycle is the water cycle, determining where you can grow things. The second cycle is the energy cycle, how fast things grow. And Finland typically is energy limit, whereas a country like France is typically water limited. Right? And whenever you grow something, what you do is actually sequestration of atmospheric CO2 into biomass or sugars above and below the ground, which means the carbon cycle. So all of these three cycles critically dependent on a single variable, temperature. So temperature determines how much water is available, how much water you need. It determines if you are in the optimal range of temperatures for maximum growth, and therefore also determines the carbon cycle. So what Consular does in a nutshell is we measure temperature. We do so from space to support, to support global food security at the field level. And this is how it looks. Obviously, this has palm trees, but it's not an agriculture picture. But it gives an idea of what you can see in these temperature images, red being hotter temperatures and blue being cooler temperatures. It will completely change our understanding of our planet at a level and accuracy which has never been uh, possible before. And why the heck do we do this from space? Can't you just put weather stations in the field? And the answer is yes, but agriculture is vast. So you need something which allows you to have global coverage. And space systems have this global coverage. You also need something which is reliable. So you can afford putting a very, very expensive camera, which you couldn't put on the drone, into a satellite to get the best data possible, because it's all about data quality in the end. Um, what's really important to ensure the uptake by the end user, which is the farmer, is that it's hassle-free. You don't want to install things in your field, get them out before harvest, and then actually clean poop from whatever birds um, on there uh, uh, in between. That's something you simply don't want to do. It needs to be timely in order to be able to support your use case. So you don't need it every 10 minutes, but you probably need daily information. And again, here satellites are key. But most importantly for food security is the scalability of the approach. Because 60% of all the arable um, area in the world is in Sub-Saharan Africa and South America. That's going to be the food baskets of the future. So we need to make sure that we transport technology there, which is supporting us at the price level, which can be matched. And this is exactly what Consola is doing and where we are outstanding in our field. We focus on data quality. We focus on the reliability, on the measurement of the measurement. And there are other companies, and they're completely fit for purpose, just not agriculture, which might focus on resolution for defense use cases, or coverage for wildfire, um, or use other parts of the, uh, of the spectrum, not the thermal spectrum, to do other use cases. They're all good. But if you want to do environmental monitoring, you need to be tailored to agriculture in the end. And that's what we are. And this shows in the traction we have so far. It shows that we have been able to acquire 3 million in AIR already ahead of launch, a year ahead of launch for a product which doesn't really exist. It shows you how much the market is waiting for this. And we are selling this as we speak, not only to governments, but mostly to seed producers, to big machine producers, to agri uh, companies which are uh, doing crop protection, which are producing fungicides, fertilizers. So the big 
agri-tech companies of this world. Um, let's pause it for a moment because I talked about food security at the beginning and what would the actual effect be of this technology being unleashed to the world. Um, the effect would be that assuming a single use case, right? We assume we just optimize irrigation. We're not using the whole capacity of the satellite network. Looking at 2027, four satellites in orbit. We're looking at, let's say, 15% of that capacity um, reused for other things, uh, uh, used in smart irrigation. We could save up to 60 billion tons of water every single year. More than 10 megatons of CO2 every single year with an end user benefit that's at the farmer side in the billions. If you would use this water just from this 15% of capacity use of the satellites and reapply it to other fields, you could add another 100 million people fed on this planet. So without any more resources, feeding another 100 million people, a multitude of the number of inhabitants in this country. So take our messages. The big problem is water. Food security is, in fact, water security. And climate change is also, in fact, water change. And the first sector which will be hit is agriculture. It's an early victim, but it's also the solution. It's the biggest leverage we have because it is the biggest user of water on the planet. 70% of all water goes into agriculture. The good news is there is thermal monitoring from space, and this seems to be a viable solution. We already sent something in space last year on the space station. We showed that the technology is working. We're now working towards the commodization. The first two satellites are in production and are going to be launched within a year from now. So we are at the onset of re-evaluating the understanding of our entire planet away from pretty pictures, which are still important but not necessary for this use case, going to the actual biophysical reality of our planet. So take our messages if there are some. I would like to remember you the following. First of all, and as a sad promise, in three years from now, people will talk more about water than they're talking about carbon today. That is a very sad promise, but I'm 100% convinced that this is going to be the case. The next message is that Earth's observation, in particular thermal monitoring from space, will be key in tackling this challenge. But again here, the truth is, we do not have a lot of time. This is super urgent. Agriculture will be the sector which will be hit fastest and hardest. And if we don't solve this problem in the next five to six years, this means that a lot of the innovations you see around here, which are amazing, won't really matter anymore because we will have bigger problems in our hands. So make sure that you invest your time, your energy, your purpose into the right fields. Make sure of that. And together, we can still win this fight. I'm optimistic that we can. So we should. And we will win this fight. We will win it for you, for us, and most importantly, for the generation to come. Thank you very much.